Excuse me? I misunderstood? Are you hearing this? The audacity. Uh, yes, yes. Let me uh, see if I got this correct. I purchased a stick from your website and... You know what, you know what? You tell me what this product is called. A walking stick. That's right, a walking stick. And let me ask, what is the subject of a walking stick? Oh, oh, you don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> well, let me break it down for you. The subject is the stick, and the word walking is a present participle used as an adjective to describe the action of the stick. Thank you. I've had this walking stick for 12 hours, and I have not seen it take a single step. Not a single Who step. Who ever heard of a walking stick that doesn't even walk? No. I need to know what you're gonna do about this to make it right, and I want you to call me back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a falling stick now. No, fine, falling stick. You want to go to brunch? Yeah. All right.
Weasel. Weasel. Weasel was his nickname. Yeah, that's right. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And welcome to the, the So and So Show. Show. Well, John, it's been a fun month. Yeah. We've been learning all about kindness. Yes, and we've learned a lot about hiking in the great outdoors. That's right. I'd like to think that we've become a couple of experts. Indeed. And when you become a couple of self-proclaimed experts, you have to share that knowledge. Absolutely. So that's why we're starting a podcast. No, we're no, not. No, we're, we're not, not starting, starting a podcast. podcast. I mean, we have our own show, so we can just... Take oh. the next few minutes and tell everyone what we've learned. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you go get your camping supplies and I will go get mine. Perfect. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Ultimate, Ultimate Camping Guide, Guide with Veranda and John. Looking good. What buddy. are you wearing? Only the best. You're in a tuxedo. Yeah, with designer hiking boots. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Why don't you show uh, the rest of us in here uh, what you brought in your camping starter kit. A starter set? Yeah, I assume you have more than just uh, that. <laughs> no, and what are you talking about? You're, you're wearing a tuxedo and hiking boots. Uh, designer hiking boots. Yeah, whatever. And that's not all I have. Okay, okay. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to take this over. Ugh. So. When you're camping, it's important to travel light. For shelter, I have my lightweight tent. There we go. I have a sleeping bag packed as tight as possible to not take up too much space. Let's see, I have a waterproof matches, a water bottle and water filter. You don't want to be carrying a lot of water with you, so you'll want to filter some along the way. Oh, I carry all of my water with me. <laughs> what? That's going to really weigh you down. Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> Just let me handle this, all right. Hey, the best part of camping is unplugging. <laughs> and there, there's a good chance that you'll be out of cell range, so you wanna make sure that you have a good map and a compass. Yeah, I'm not so sure you should be the one claiming to be an expert because there's an app for that. John, just trust me on this one, all right? Of course. All right, you need a small thing of toiletries, uh, biodegradable TP if you don't wanna use leaves, hey. <laughs> and a small shovel. Wait, 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 what, what, what is that for? You know, for... <laughs> no! Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, fine. Okay, so finally, uh, your food. Yeah, I only take fresh vegetables and meat to grill. <laughs> well, you're not gonna be able to keep that cold. I'm sure there's a way to do that. I think what you're talking about is car camping. <laughs> I guess that's okay, car camping counts. When you're car camping, you can take a few extra things. So, John. Hey there, hey there, yeah. Oh, no, no, go ahead and back it down the driveway, Earl. <laughs> what is that? Oh, you'll see. There she is, huh? John, that is not camping. Well, we'll let the people decide. Now, just outside, we have our 35-foot Dreamliner Class A motorhome. You won't have to worry about finding water because you can carry it in your 80-gallon fresh water tank. 80 gallons? Yeah, that doesn't include the 300 gallons of water that are in the hot tub. Hot tub? Yes. Oh, man. You're gonna need to relax after you hike. You can stretch or cool off in a creek. Well, sure, but you can also cool off with your top-of-the-line dual air conditioning units oh. and then sit down oh. and watch a movie on your 75 inch ultra high def TV screen. Or just, or just look at the birds, or the stars, or, or read a book by firelight. I don't go camping not to have all the comforts of home. I go camping to treat myself. But that's not camping. You're just moving a, a luxury hotel near the woods. Camping in an RV is the only way to go camping. It is not. I'm not pooping in the woods. It's a natural human function. There is nothing natural about that. You know, I, I Troubles. Don't, I don't even think you like like camping. Yes, I do. I just think camping is different than you do. <sighs> I can't anymore. It's Bible story time. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Hey fellas, how's it going? Do you like camping? I do. I mean, sometimes I like to go out with just the bare minimum of supplies. Exactly. But my aunt and uncle have this really nice RV that I get to use occasionally, which is also a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I usually like to car camp, though, where I sleep in a tent, but I can keep all my stuff in my car. Any way you can get outside and enjoy God's creation is A-OK -okay with me. Well, I guess so. Do you have a story for us today? I sure do, but I think I'm going to need your help. You up for it? Absolutely. Great. Our story today comes from Luke chapter 10. It is often referred to as the parable of the Good Samaritan. 
a religious leader asked Jesus what he needed to have eternal life. Jesus asked the man what the scripture said, and the man replied with two verses. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus told the man if he did those things, he would have life. But then the man asked this question, who is my neighbor? And Jesus responded with this story. There was a man traveling down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, the road from Jerusalem to Jericho had a reputation for being extremely dangerous. It was a very narrow road, so it was a place that robbers could easily attack. <laughs> Give me all your money. Wait. What? Uh, we're gonna do this the hard way, huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Ow! You haven't had enough yet. Stop! Uh, someone help me! Uh, I'll take that! Uh, <laughs> oh. Good luck surviving in this heat. Hey! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Somebody! I'm going to die! Robbers had come and stolen from the man and beat him up and left him to die. But then, a priest came walking by. Someone that was a religious leader and knew the scriptures about helping those who were suffering. Surely, he would do the right thing. Well, let's see. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Stop making that horrible noise. Burger, burger. Ah. Uh, there's nowhere for me to cross. Uh, I can't look. Uh, why don't they make these roads wider? Oh well, here goes nothing. Uh, ah. I don't know if it was quite that dramatic, but in the story, the priest did not help the man. But up next was a Levite. He probably knew a lot of the scriptures. The priest didn't help, but surely the Levite would. Uh, nope. Uh, ah. Nope. Jesus then told of a final person, a Samaritan. Now, it's important to know that Samaritans in that time were considered outcasts. The people who were listening to Jesus tell this story probably had an idea of Samaritans being untrustworthy and beneath them. So it may have been a little of a shock to hear of a Samaritan turning up in the story. The Samaritan came and found the man lying on the ground and he took care of his wounds. Here you go, friend. Jesus says the Samaritan then put the man on his donkey. Okay, friend, let's get you on that donkey. Thank you, friend. Right. <laughs> okay, help me a little bit. Okay, okay, Just give okay. me your hands. Okay. Okay, the donkey's got me. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! The pain! The agony! Alley -oop. Oh. 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 Come along.
long donkey. Jesus goes on to say that the Samaritan not only took care of the man's wounds on the road, but that he brought him to an inn and took care of him there. And the next day, paid the innkeeper to take care of him while he was gone. Jesus then asked, which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? And the man who asked the question replied, the one who felt sorry for him. Jesus told the man, go and do as he did. The end. Great story. Yeah, th thanks for helping me out. Our pleasure. You know, I have to say, I've heard that story a few times, but it's always good to hear again. Same. It's really cool to see the Samaritan be kind to someone who is so different. I mean, I have a hard time being kind to my friends sometimes when I think about something differently than they do. Right, but Jesus calls us to be kind to everyone, not just the people who are like you, but even people who are different from you. That's awesome. Hey, thanks for the story. You bet. Later. Okay, so maybe camping out in an RV isn't the only way to go camping. Are you kidding? Air conditioning in the woods would be amazing. I, I want to try it your way next time. And I just want to get out there and rough it for a change. You know, really experience the wide open world. I guess it's possible to be different and, and still be kind to one another. You know what? I think you're right. Yeah. So, reveal the question. How can you care for people who are different from you? Yeah, there are lots of ways we are different from one another. Mm -hmm. uh, we look different, we act different, dress different, think different. Yeah. Um, how can we care for each other? Yeah, maybe there's someone you feel like you have nothing in common with. Maybe you can eat lunch with them and ask them what they like to do for fun. Yeah, you might know someone who doesn't speak the same language as you. Uh, you, you can have them teach you some new words and then, then you can do the same. Or, or maybe you know someone who doesn't look exactly like you. Find some things you have in common. It's important we care for everyone the way Jesus did. And like the Good Samaritan. Yes, so go and talk about it. How can you care for people who are different from you? And we'll see you next time. Time on the, the so, -and so and so show. Now, my friend, to the woods, I'll drive. All right, I'll bring my shovel. You. It's best to be prepared. Right. I'll Where go we're first. we're going, we don't need shovels. Hey, hey, we just got some handwritten correspondence in our so and so show mailbag. Okay, it's a box, but all right. Uh, this is from Olivia in California. All right, here we go. Awesome, California. Right, what does Olivia have to say? Dear John and Brandon, I watch your shows all the time. Aw. Uh -huh. And I have your devotional. Oh, cool. When you read this letter, can you read it on the so-and-so show? I don't know. I'm we'll sorry, we can't. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if you already made one for the week, please read it the next week. Okay. I would love that. By the way, my name is Olivia. Also, I love the Bible stories. Yes. Thanks, your friend, Olivia. All right. All right, thanks, Olivia. Yeah. Thanks for the letter. If we can read it on this show, we will, but yeah. I, I don't know if we're gonna have time. Yeah. I mean, maybe during the credits? Yeah, maybe, maybe we can work that in next week. Next week, okay. So tune in next week to see oh. Olivia's letter.